I'm Patrick Reitzer. I'm the president and CEO of the Tillamook County Creamery Association. Tillamook is a 107-year-old farmer-owned dairy cooperative. So we operate on the coast of Oregon, a pretty rural place there. And uh, we manufacture and market uh, cheddar cheese, a little bit of other cheeses, ice cream, yogurt, sour cream, and butter. The brand was really strong, and, and, but thought of as, you know, sort of almost like a heritage brand, kind of my parents grew up with it. I went there when I was, I went to the factory when I was a kid. My mom always cooked with it. Um, I really appreciate the quality of the product. That was sort of the extent of the brand identity right. at that time. When I interviewed for the job in early 2012, uh, I was clearly the growth candidate that they were considering. So there were, you know, there were other candidates for the position. And, you know, I came in and I said, this business should be two or three times the size it is today. Uh, to make that happen, we're going to have to invest in it. We're going to have to work closely together. Uh, and we're going to have to pursue a bolder vision for the company. But really, we, that should be well within reach uh, for this business. And, um, you know, we, we should, uh, we, we should see a nice return for the members, for the shareholders, uh, on investments made towards driving that kind of growth. The new brand identity, I would say, uh, evolved sort of simultaneously with the marketing effort or the, the, the consumer communications. Um, so probably, if you, if you designed it perfectly, you'd do it a little bit differently. You know, what exactly is the identity? Um, or the you know sort of bedrock of the brand and then how do we communicate that with consumers but you know one thing that we talked about internally and and we built some confidence around was this idea that we did have something unique to offer to the marketplace and so and that went beyond just the product you, you know and sort of extended into this idea of the food supply chain so um, you know we, we had this early concept that what we stood for and sort of the origin story of the brand offered something different to a consumer that was increasingly interested in where does their food come from all the way back to the soil. What we see as our challenge is challenging the industrialized, highly uh, segmented food supply chain. One of the things that's been a, a core inspiration for us is the origin story. So, you know, all these, you know, folks in the 1800s went all the way west, claimed land, tried to farm it. The only thing that would grow there would be grass. So what do you do with grass? You put cows on it. Then they were making all this milk, but there's not enough people to drink all that milk. So they made cheese and then they had to get the cheese. They put it on a boat actually and took it around the coastal range to Portland to the market. So really, the origin was we're going to make this great product and we need to somehow connect with the consumer markets. And so we still see that very much as our mission is connecting farmers and consumers. And so as, as we think about it that way and think about the, the difference between uh, farmer centric businesses or far, farmer driven businesses in the food industry and what has sort of happened in the U S around industrialization. Um, we think that there's something, a unique offering there. And so that's really kind of been our challenge. And so as we went to 72 and Sunny, they helped us, I mean, frankly, they helped us think through that and clarify it, but also they got super excited about this idea. Wait, we have something unique here. By the way, it happens to be on trend. You know, it's hundred years old, but it, you know, we, we joke around culture caught up to us sort of, or I don't know, we hung around long enough that actually we became relevant. I don't know what the right way to talk about that is, but we basically, uh, you know, we're on trend. You know, people want to know where their food comes from. They want some connection to the farm and farmers and people like farmers and they trust them and, and they want a product that has a little extra care in it. And so all of those things, I think were, were big inspiration for that first campaign. U.S. consumers spend a smaller percentage of their income on food than almost any place else in the world. And, but the, the food they're getting for that, uh, that value engineered food is creating epidemic, uh, you know, food-related diseases, for example. Well, the consumer might think they want lower, lower, lower prices, and retailers might think they want lower, lower, lower prices. It's, it's, it's not serving the overall food industry and not serving the consumer well. So I think the, the system is perfectly developed 
to pull out whatever nutrients are not necessarily being specifically required in that situation, and then to put a few back to market them uh, to, to be low cost as possible. And so, you know, I'm not against technology, I'm not against industrialization per se, but the output of the industrial food complex that we've built is not serving the environment well, not serving the consumer well. We launched the Dairy Done Right campaign as our first kind of effort behind this stronger, bolder, more challenger oriented kind of voice with the consumer. And the essence of the campaign uh, was to be, was to look different, sound different, um, and to grab attention. And so no voiceover. So for example, in the digital uh, or the television, we did television advertising with it, um, as well as digital and print and everything else. But um, the, the essence of the campaign was black background, bold imagery, no voiceover, and kind of distinctive, unexpected music the, and with the tagline, Dairy Done Right. Um, usually drawing a contrast between sort of the industrialized food and what we were offering. Internally, it had a much bigger impact than I thought it was gonna have. So we were at a, in a time period where sort of, in terms of internal company culture, we were trying to convince um, folks that we could grow the business aggressively and that we could compete effectively with large multinational companies that were much better resourced than we were. And you know, we were doing that by celebrating small wins, highlighting what was different about us internally. That Dairy Done Right campaign really brought all that to life for folks. And as we did, we did sort of launch lounges with employees where we brought them in so they could see it. Of course, they saw it in local markets and they were proud of what they saw, but also it became a source of inspiration. And in fact, I, all of a sudden I noticed that done right concept became um, something that was a phrase used internally all the, t you know, frequently. So somebody would say new product development done right or IT done right or whatever it was. And it, you know, we didn't really push that. It just happened. In clarifying what dairy done right means, we've actually pulled some products off the shelf and reformulated very popular products, even to the detriment of market share. We had a sour cream product that we were offering that we pulled off the shelf because we didn't feel like it was living up to our standards. Uh, we had a mozzarella product that we pulled off the shelf because we didn't think it was living up to our standards as we sort of clarified them and kind of redefined them in a way that was going back to the core. Um, we reformulated our, our family size ice cream offering even though it was the most popular ice cream in the Northwest and was actually driving a lot of growth, we did it right in the middle of gaining distribution with you know, kind of some risk. And our traditional yogurt, our non-Greek yogurt, we reformulated that to add protein, lower sugar, um, and take out any, a few artificial uh, ingredients that were in there. Um, actually lost some distribution over doing that because it meant a higher price point, but it was the right thing to do for the brand. One of the first things we did in 2012, or really 13, we were kind of resetting the strategy, is we act, actually contracted and constrained our geographic reach. So we sort of said Western United States plus Texas, west of the Rockies plus Texas, we're going to constrain our capability, our um, we're going to constrain our uh, trading area, our market focus to those areas, and where we've gotten offers from retailers to expand further, we've respectfully declined those until we felt like we were ready to pursue uh, more geographic expansion. In the last five years, we've seen 70% growth in revenue, uh, a three times increase in profitability and a similar uh, increase in the distributions to the farmers who own, who own the business. One key part to how we think about Challenger is we stand for something. And then the other thing is just to be a little bit bolder than we probably would have been otherwise. And so the campaign we ran after Dairy Done Right, which is goodbye big food, hello real food, where we're literally blowing up competitors' products and lighting them on fire. I mean, that was certainly more provocative than we would have done uh, you know, before, several years before and definitely fueled by this idea of being you know, being a challenger. If we're a challenger, that means we stand for something. It also means we're challenging. We're out there doing, we're saying something. We're, we're expressing that point of view. And, uh, and, and you, know, I, I, it's, you know, it's been inspirational internally. And I think it's, it's fueled a lot of our best ideas and best communications.